A YouTube prankster has been elected to the European Parliament with 19.4% of the votes. Phidias Paniotu, a 24-year-old influencer from Cyprus, ran as an independent and has managed to emerge as the most voted candidate in the country ever. Does this mean that YouTubers and TikTokers will rule the world in the future? <laughs> So this guy just got elected into European Parliament. <laughs> oh, this is great. I can't believe that this is real life, but I will try to explain you the story. It all started six months ago when I received a call from a politician here in Cyprus and he was saying, Phidias, you need to run as a member of the European Parliament. I was very angry in the beginning because I didn't find any reason not to do it. I hate politics here in Cyprus. I think it's very old fashioned. I think the system is kind of corrupted and the parties just do stuff to help themselves and not the people. So I thought that my campaign will be useful for Cyprus. And I thought that it would be very cool for like YouTube history for someone to get really elected. So I took the decision to do it. I was so annoyed with him. I was like, don't do it. I will stop working with you if you do it <laughs> because we are working together. And I was so passionately annoyed with this decision. I disencouraged him and uh, asked him to stop, not to try because he will fail. The whole family didn't receive it very well. They were not happy with it. Uh, but I didn't care, obviously. <laughs> After I announced it to my family, it was time to start. And to be honest, I had no clue what I'm going to do. When I have ideas generally, I call the people that they know more about this and I ask them questions. So this is what I did. Six months ago, I received a phone call from a guy named Phidias. I didn't know much about him. And he asked me a lot of questions about how the European Parliament work and uh, if it's possible for someone independent to elect as a member of the European Parliament. I, I told him that it's impossible. No one achieved to elect as independent member, especially in Cyprus, but I didn't know about Fidias. Lucas said that don't do it. YouTube is a better job, you're making more money there. So I took this as a challenge, let's say. The first TV appearance that I did, people didn't take it seriously, let's say that. He announced his uh, candidacy wearing three ties and his underwear. So we thought he was joking. We were trying to figure out if he was serious or if it was another challenge. I thought that he was looking at this whole thing as a game. He was not serious, I thought, about that he was going to do. It went viral, but it didn't receive the response that I wanted. Like, they didn't took me seriously at all. And that was a problem. So I needed to do something to convince them that, no guys, this is serious. And how I was going to do that, my idea was to convince a party to allow me to run on their ballot. He was in discussions with political parties in order for him to, to grab into a, a movement or an organization. I had a meeting with three parties and two of the parties rejected me. They didn't took me seriously, but the Green Party here in Cyprus actually took it seriously. Okay, he's an environmentalist, he, he's a vegetarian. It, it would be the, the best party that he could join kind of. I, I preferred him to be an independent myself. He was more leaning towards being a part of the coalition of the Greens. We had long discussion with Anna. I was like at one time, I wanted him to go with a party because he had more chance if he was with a party at that point. The Green Party said yes to my request to run with them. So after the party said yes, I put it as a poll on TikTok. People of Cyprus, what do you want me to do? You want me to go with the Green Party or you want me to go as an independent? I remember we went early in the morning in uh, his village and uh, we made a nice video in the natural environment and Fidias asked the people, what do you want? I want you to choose and people, 70% chose him not to join the Green Coalition and 30% yes. So I was relieved and I think Fidias, deep inside him, he wanted 
not to become a part of it. He wanted to be an, an uh, independent. When Fidias make that poll, that move will me because this is the democracy. 2024, this is the democracy. To ask the people on every time, for, every, for everything. And people have opinion for all. If it's correct, if it's wrong, this is the democracy. I really like the fact that the people decided for Fidias what they want him to do because they were part of it. And they, they feel that, and we feel that we are part of the decision making that Fidias is doing. I didn't know how to create a campaign, but what I thought inside me, it's not to promote myself and just do a regular campaign. I wanted to give value to the people and if I gave them value, they will vote for me. So I started giving them value in a lot of different ways. The first and a huge way was starting a podcast. Fidia's podcast was like, uh, I think, the highlight of his campaign. Uh, many people think that it's about uh, videos on TikTok, but in the podcast, you could see that Fidia's has knowledge. So you, he would talk about AI or talk about philosophy, talk about politics, deep philosophy, but using this everyday life language. So the guests had also to use this language and they, they used to appreciate because they would understand everything, even about difficult subjects. He managed to capitalize the, the format of podcasting, meaning he created long form episodes and then he was chopping it off and redistributing it into all platforms, TikTok, YouTube. And slowly from zero followers that we had in the beginning in our Instagram, our Facebook, our Twitter, we started growing rapidly. The podcast in two months started becoming the biggest podcast in Cyprus. And I met so many people here in Cyprus. I learned a lot of things through a podcast. And the most beautiful thing was that not only me, but we were giving free value to so many people here in Cyprus. And they learned among us. After this started a conversation between the young generation and the old generation, the older generation that they knew mostly his podcast, they didn't know about his English uh, prank entertainment channel. People maybe heard of Fidias through the conversations of, of their children, and then they would go to such and ah, you know, I, 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 now I know who this Fidias is because I, I watch this podcast. So it brought a conversation within families. So they discovered that they have something in common, Fidias. And they were discussing about Fidias podcast and about Fidias shorts, and about Fidias live stream. So it became like a, a unique uh, bond in the families. I learned in Fidias podcast about education that education is the first foundation of everything, is the key for everything. Fidias is very radical and very angry about the education system. But the one thing that he was very clear and firm and sure that he can promise to people was about education. Very determined that as a politician, his first goal was to change the education system because Fidias feels that he is totally wrong. It's very counterproductive. It makes people hate learning and because Fidias like learning, he's very emotional about this. Fidias believes that the education system must make people, first of all, enjoy and, and love learning in order to become long life learners, not just to pass the exam and that's it. I'm a student, I'm going to school and I know what Fidias stand for, uh, schools and that stuff. And I agree with him because like schools is like prisons. Actually, you don't learn anything. If you are interested to something, you will learn it. But most of my subject, I'm not interested to it. And as many times as I do it, I will not learn anything. I will forget it in a week or in a month and I will not remember anything. Another way that we tried to give value to the people was by teaching them about the European Union, teaching them about politics and teaching them about corruption here in Cyprus. For the first time, Fidias was the only uh, candidate that actually explained to people how to vote. I mean, he did the tutorial that everyone believed that people should know, but Fidias actually did help a lot in making the people understand how to vote. It was like very interesting. A lot of 15 years old, 16 years old guys like my age, 
They was like talking about Fidias, talking about politics. I didn't knew anything about politics. But because Fidias was like part of the election, I learned everything. And I'm like 16 years old, I don't vote. But now I am, I'm interested in politics. And when I become 18, for sure I'm going to vote. But I don't think democracy is the best. Eh? But let's do, don't talk about this. <laughs> Okay, I will tell you a secret, guys. In all these videos that we were educating people about stuff, it was not my ideas. And I didn't know the stuff. And my teacher was reading and coming up with the ideas. And he was coming here. He was teaching me about a topic. And then after he was teaching me for 20 minutes, I was filming the video to explain and teach people. <laughs> Which kind of proves that you don't need to know everything. You just need to have the right people around you. I was always there, so it's like I'm a part of Fidias. <laughs> I cannot decouple myself. I was always there from the first moment of the idea till now. I, I cannot find a, a different role than Fidias in the decisions. Of course, Fidias was the face of the whole thing, but I was always there. <laughs> uh, my sister, from wanting to quit, she became the biggest believer in the whole campaign. It's crazy, <laughs> the 180 degree shift that she did. At the beginning, when he came up with a swimsuit, etc., I thought it was just for a challenge and he will try and do whatever. But when I could see that he could find problems and go and solve them and uh, take, uh, expose them and that he has power and he can actually make uh, influence. That was a turning point from me, that uh, this is serious. Lugaricos and Anna mostly, they were spending all of their time awake. I was seeing Anna in the house all day working or from the morning to night and he was like, don't have much sleep, like three, four hours and wake up again. So I give them maybe the most credits about Fidia's success. And the third way that we tried to give value to the people, it was by making vlogs of my day. I was sharing every problem that I found along the way. Basically, I did what I do best, to be vulnerable and tell stories on the internet about my life. And that caused for other people to get invested in this journey. Personally, I've been studying the voters' behavior over the past 25 years. It's very important for us to understand the behavior the incentives and the motives that will drive the voters to exercise their voting right. So what we've seen with Fidias, okay, the direct uh, dialogue or an interaction between the voters and the candidate in an open and transparent manner, definitely we've seen that this is what today the people or the future voters will be looking for. It's an evolution of the traditional political system into something more new, something more fresh, and something that people, voters, actually are seeking for. I just sent him one message. Hello, Fidias. I am 39 years old, and I want to vote you because you are the, the, the democracy. If you want to ask something that people, you can do it even on TikTok or on YouTube. And this is the democracy on 2024. The people speak every day and not every five year when it's the elector. Continue like that, you are the democracy, we are behind you. I haven't voted for 20 years. You know, after seeing so many videos of, of him and so many actions that he was doing, I thought, yes, I'm gonna vote um, Fidia. I'm not gonna vote anyone else. In Cyprus, not everyone is allowed to vote above 18. You need to go and register, which is a problem. But also when you have a problem, there is an opportunity. So basically in Cyprus, you need to go and register to be part of the electoral role, which is the only country in Europe with Ireland that they have this rule. And in Cyprus, it's even more complicated. If you are above 25, you need to go to two different places, get authorization, and then go to another place and submit your papers to register. Without really knowing, uh, but we assume that the people that will vote for us are going to be the people that are not registered to vote. And the goal was to break the record in the whole history of Cyprus of the most people that got registered to vote. 
So I started a journey of going to universities, of going to schools. I was going to football matches. I was going to the malls. And I was just writing countless of people to register to vote. One cool way that we thought to convince more people to register to vote, it was a bit crazy one. It was to run across the whole country and wear a t-shirt, register to vote. It was kind of symbolic because in my country, we have a problem, it's divided, it's occupied at the half part of Cyprus by the Turkish army. Uh, so I started from the occupied side and I finished in the free side. So it was 80 kilometers. <laughs> I was saying, please don't do it. Start it from like the halfway, 40 kilometers is more than enough. Do a marathon, don't do like double a marathon. I thought he's not gonna do it. Then I saw a video of him saying it in the social media and then I was like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> because when he announces something, he's doing it for sure. So we did it. We live streamed the whole thing. When we crossed in, in the, the south part, people started to join running with him. Some of them ran like 20 kilometers with Fidias. People were, were inform us, don't go from that road. They would change our route because they knew a better route to pass from another route. A lot of information was, was very interactive, the whole thing. Though he was very tired, he didn't stop. And uh, I was very worried because I thought he wouldn't uh, make it. And uh, at the end of the marathon, I was running with him. <laughs> and uh, he did a very good job. This showed to people that I'm not just sitting from my house and telling you guys, I'm here suffering. This is important for me. And when you ask like people, why are you going to vote for Fidias? Back then they said that because he ran across Cyprus and he is willing and determined to do whatever it takes. And finally, after these 80 kilometers, we achieved to break the record, guys. From the 15,000 that was the previous record in Cyprus history, we achieved to have 26,000 people to register to vote. This is a big W for democracy, and this is one way that we gave value to the people because this is important to register to vote. After Fidia's attempt, the government now is thinking to simplifying much more the procedure of getting registered. And you might be wondering why I'm wearing these clothes. I will explain in a bit. But the next big day in the whole campaign was the actual day that I officially put my candidacy for the European Parliament. The day before, we had like a conversation. You need to go there with nice <laughs> clothes, <laughs> not with a short. Or <laughs> and then when I saw him like with the nicest clothes and next to my father, I, I was feeling very emotional. That day was special. I dressed well. I wear cofundy clothes like I'm wearing now. People in Cyprus were commenting on this so much because I was wearing this as well in my candidacy. I was wearing kind of a costume and people are not used to seeing me with this formal clothes and they enjoyed it and they really liked my look. So Kofandi did its job and that's why we have them sponsor for this video as well. And I actually love their clothes because they are comfortable, they are affordable and they look Nice. <laughs> Kofandi has a new collection for suits, guys, like this. And if you want to get dressed for a wedding or you have something important in your life that you need to look good, go now to the top link on the description and check out Kofandi clothes. And now we move to my speech. The speech was based in the expression, I'm tired. Fidias was saying, I'm tired of X, Y, Z. I'm tired. Of and he was representing a lot of people in Cyprus. Some people mock after that, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. How can you be tired to you are like 24 years old? But people that are 24 years old, they are old enough to be tired of this kind of politics that they cannot understand, but they know that they are influential for their life. That so so. A young person like Fidias can be tired. Imagine the old people of Cyprus, how they identify themselves with this I'm tired because they are sick of this kind of politics a lot. And I feel at that day with that speech, it was the start of the campaign because for the first time, people took us seriously after this. They were inviting us to do TV panels against our opponents. And this was so much fun. <laughs> I cannot describe you guys. I was 
so much enjoyed this part of, of the journey because I was going there with the other candidates and they were wearing suits and ties and they were talking very robotic and you understood half of the stuff that they said and I was just like this excited happy about life and it was a good contrast between just a simple person that is happy and excited about life and just robots so people saw this contrast and they really liked it the other candidates that was so scared of Fibia. You know, everyone was so angry with him, uh, they were attacking him and um, that's a message of being scared. Of course it's a panic. It was an independent candidate, 24 years old, with no clue about politics. So yes, I mean, uh, political parties that they're counting 100 years old, 50 years old, 80 years old, were like, where did you come from? What do you want from us? <laughs> they were saying, what do you know about the European Parliament? I was saying, nothing, but I'm going to learn. And people, in a way, appreciated the honesty more than they appreciated in other candidates having positions and having knowledge. It's, it's a peculiarity in Cyprus because we, we are speaking a hard dialect of Greek and uh, Fidias was not only using the hard dialect, he was also talking to the colloquial argo of people. It's the language that everyone understands. Politicians are speaking like um, a wooden uh, language, that uh, they are far from people. They speak like fluent Greek with nice words, but that people don't understand. Phidias uh, was real and also used this beloved everyday language that everybody loves. I saw politicians in panels they were speaking academic the previous day and they, when they realized that it's catchy for the people to hear the Cypriot dialect, they, they're starting to speak like him. Other politicians told me to go and make events in Cyprus to talk with the people. And this is what I did, but we did it in a cooler way. When I was going there, I started live streaming the talk. Let's say a hundred people showed up, but hundreds of thousands of people join the live stream to see what I was doing. So that's where the leverage comes from. We did something in front of 100 people and we used this to have a live stream for 40, 50,000 people to come in the live stream and see what we are doing. And not only that, after the live stream, we were cutting clips and we were uploading short form content on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram. We did one thing, but the result was much bigger. And this, I think, is the secret formula here because we use the social media in the right way. Live stream, it's big. Because in live stream, people can see you how you are. They can see you making mistakes, it's not edited. And people were very interested in it because they saw the reality. From my 20 years experience in digital marketing, we see that in order to get campaigns going, you need to pay for them. But Tidias did that purely organically without spending a single dollar in digital marketing advertising. And organically, it's really hard to do it because you need really amazing content that's authentic, that is up to date. Imagine if you are a politician, you go to the TV, you get zero comments. You put a billboard out, you get zero comments. But when you put things online, you get instant feedback. He would criticize the traditional, uh, non-inspiring ways of campaigning of the other politicians. So he would uh, go outside, show these are the billboards of the politicians. They are all look the same. They just have a picture. They just have a catchy kind of motto next to them. That means nothing. And Fidias will use this as a way of gaining popularity. Whenever people were, were watching yet another billboard of the same politician, would think positively about Fidias, would remember Fidias' uh, critique, and would feel negative about the guy who put the billboard. My biggest problem in the whole campaign was this. I didn't know if I was doing well or if I was doing horrible. <laughs> we, we were clueless. Maybe people like what we were doing, but they were not going to vote for us. Even when they start the first uh, polls, they wouldn't show Fidias. Zero, like no Fidias is there. But in the polls, they, they always had others. And you would imagine that maybe we are casting among the other, 
to not be able to have feedback if you are doing well or not with polls, it's something that it really hurt me. I was so excited to see the new polls about the elections and I was going on the TV to see them and it's like they showed us not existent and I was like, oh, it hurts. <laughs> maybe at the polls at the beginning, maybe people didn't want to say who's going to vote for. We're in Cyprus. We're in a very, very small island. Everyone knows everyone. So sometimes some people, they don't say what they're going to vote. Three weeks before the elections, something could happen. Finally, the polls were showing us that we have around 5% of the vote, which this was a miracle because people for the first time in the whole campaign felt that this is possible. I think the politicians got him seriously the last 20 days when the polls started to show 6%, 8%. They said, uh-oh, something is happening here. The other parties were saying really kind of nasty things about us, that I'm stupid, I'm a joke. And this led to the best idea that we had in the campaign. This was not my idea. This was my teacher's idea. We thought from the beginning, we understood that this is a strategic move and whenever a politician was attacking Fidias, we would cut it short, clip, and we would upload it in TikTok, and etc. So we understood and we were right. People would take the side of Fidias and it was a very successful move. The comments were going crazy. Come on, guys. This is just a 24 years old kid that is trying to help. And all you guys, politicians, that you want younger people to be involved with politics, now that it's finally happening, you are attacking him. So this was amazing for our campaign. This is what made the final push. So in the last two weeks, it was like a snowball effect. The volumes of the followers were growing a lot and very fast. The volumes of the people doing videos about Fidias and like that they openly support him. I was supporting full of him all of him, with all my heart, and, I, and it, I didn't regret it, not a single minute about it. Fidias was on TikTok every single day. He was in our kitchen, in our bedrooms, in our couches, he was everywhere. All the parties have like teams and every person in every corner, in every neighborhood. And Fidias had nobody, but he had the word. Uh, the kids working f with their parents, uh, people speaking in their job about it. He was a, a topic in many conversations. People were trying to make, convince other people to vote for Fidias. So with Without him knowing, people were doing all the work that parties are paying people to do. You can say that in Cyprus, in this election, children got the right to vote. <laughs> and not just once, five, six votes. Grandmother, grandfather, mother, aunt, uncle, neighbor. It would have been a master move if we would have done this on purpose. But it became natural that in Cyprus, it became popular during that time that every child had to persuade their parents and their, the adults around them to vote for Fidias. People came to me and tell me, vote Fidias, vote Fidias. And I was like, I'm only 17, so I can't. So I told my parents to vote for him. I told my grandparents to vote for him. Everybody I knew. I know friends that did this actually. They were like uh, trying to convince their parents uh, that maybe there was in a party or something and they convinced them to, to vote Fidias. I think the teenagers and the kids is what made Fidias to be elected. The day of the elections finally came and I went to vote with the whole family. It was a very nice moment that time, all together, all the family. So it was an important moment that day. I went to vote for the first time in my entire life. Yes, I never voted before because I felt that nobody represents me. I was not happy with what I was seeing in the politics and I didn't want to be part of the game that I find 
as a joke. But it was time for me to vote for my first time. It was an amazing experience. All the TV stations were waiting outside for me to give another comments on my first time voting. And I was excited. I was very excited. We heard some rumors before the results of the elections were announced that I'm doing very well. The companies that they do the exit polls, they are outside the voting thing and they ask people, what did you vote? So we started to realize that it wasn't 6%, it wasn't 7%, it wasn't 9%, it was more. On the day of the elections, the number of voters that were willing to vote for Fidias had increased drastically. It's important to know that we were writing down the actual voters per hour. We've seen like until two or three o'clock, Fidias percentage was around 12 or 13. And then in the afternoon, as the time was going by, we've seen that a lot of voters went to vote for Fidias. I didn't believe the rumors 100%. I wanted to see it with my eyes. So I went to the TV station to hear the results and also get my reaction live on TV. When I was sitting to the chair and I saw the results that I was the most voted person in the country. And it was sure that I got elected to represent my beautiful country in the European Parliament. It was amazing. It was truly I'm about to cry <laughs> Because we worked so hard, guys, for six months, my friends, my family, and so many people believed in this. It was very beautiful to see that we actually got elected. <laughs> I have no words, guys. It was very emotional at that time, and to now tell the story to you guys, it's just a pleasure because <laughs> I still can't believe that this is real. <laughs> I mean, 71, 330 votes, it's a record. <laughs> In the Cyprus history, no one else, no one else did that before. He managed to achieve something that never happened in Cyprus. And uh, Fidias now is a member of European Parliament, one of the six Cypriot members in European Parliament. So he's my colleague. It was a huge shock. I mean, he managed to overpass political parties that contributed in the uh, modern history of Cyprus. And there comes a kid that he started doing social media content five years ago and gets 20%, a fifth of the votes. Oh my God, if that's not impressing, then what is? I left with my car alone and I went to see the sunset by myself and I felt the most beautiful emotions I ever felt in my life. I felt fulfilled, I felt happy, I felt excited, and I felt uh, a big wave of hope about the future, the future of the world and the future of Cyprus. And after I announced that we're going to celebrate in the capital of Cyprus, Nicosia, I went to celebrate with the people and thousands of people were waiting for me. It was something unreal, guys. I went there and people were treating me with so much happiness, so much excitement. It's crazy. I felt so much energy and I started shouting to everyone, I love you, I love you, I love you in Greek. Agabosas, agabosas, agabosas! We've been studying the, the behavior of the voters on the 9th of June, on the day of the elections, and we've been uh, monitoring and writing down the results. 55% of those who have voted Fidias have stated that Fidias is the right candidate who could represent our island, Cyprus, in the European Parliament. So 40% of those who have voted Fidias have stated that their vote, it's a vote that wants to go against the system to show their this approval of the way that the political system in Cyprus, the political parties or the institutions in general uh, behave and have shown uh, evidence over the past years. The other party leaders were shocked. They got a slap in their face. 
and I didn't give them the slap. The people of Cyprus, they gave them this slap and they said to them, wake the fuck up, stop serving the party's interest and start working for the people of Cyprus. And because these types of people, they don't understand by words, you need to shake them. So the biggest win in Cyprus from this story is the slap that they gave the people of Cyprus to the parties through me. And now the parties are shocked. They are trying to see what went wrong. They are trying to improve and hopefully they will change their behavior. The bottom line is that people like real people and politicians should know that. They should be as real as possible, as transparent as possible and work as hard as possible and prove it to people. Be politicians of the new era, not of the old era, because the old era is already gone. So this, for instance, Fidias has came and opened the door to a new transparency that what you see, direct communication, he's going to be able to take his uh, voters with him and explain everything. And for me, it's a new era of democracy. We see a promising future of a more direct democracy, maybe with more independent people leading the way. Like history told us that when the mean of communication change, politics and regimes change. So if we go back like 5,000 years ago, the invention of script enhanced the paradigm shift from the older, more uh, hunter-gatherer, eccentric, egalitarian, direct democracy of the tribe towards the appearance of the more tyrannic, despotic regimes like monarchies. This would be impossible to happen if there were no written records and written scripts. So kings were enabled because of the communication through written languages. After this liberal uh, representative democracy was enabled through the mean of communication of printing press and, and radio and, and television, etc. Now we are living in the time of a new way of communication, the interactive way through the social media. And again, I hope we will have a paradigm shift towards a new way of politics, towards a more direct democracy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am a politician. <laughs> I don't even believe it myself, but it's a reality. And it's exciting. I'm excited to learn and improve and represent not only the people of Cyprus, but whole Europe. And before I close, I just want to say, I love you.